Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. Yes, it's According to Callus, and this is episode 162. For a lack of a better word, we're going to call it Political Potpourri. Just a few things we're going to touch on are Pearl Harbor, Bob Dole, Rules and Rules, Anger versus Angst, Let It All Burn, and That'll Fix You. So, on with the show. Here we go. Okay, so as you may have figured out, today is December the 8th. Yesterday is the day that will live in infamy. And yet, I highly doubt that there's anybody that, and I hate to say it this way, I don't think there's really anybody that cares anymore. And that's particularly disturbing because you'd have to be basically uh, 95 years old to have served or uh, at least 90 to even remember it. And it's just sad. It's a sad state of affairs when the generation, and it's not even my generation, it's Primarily, um, my daughter and, you know, the the uh, millennial generation that has to live with the Twin Towers and has to live with 9-11 and all that has followed that. But for my grandparents' generation, and to a lesser extent, my parents' generation, this was bigger than all that. Indeed, it brought us into a war that, I mean, Pat Buchanan had made a very good argument that we didn't even really need to be involved in yet. And, and not to throw Pat Buchanan under the bus. There's a whole lot of people that agree with him and would make that argument. Um, yours truly actually likes the argument. It's very compelling. I don't know what I would have done if I would have been in a position of authority back then, but suffice it to say, we, the Americans got what our leaders wanted and the rest, as they say, is history. And then we just created uh, new boogeymen ever since uh, the Soviet Union uh, took a break. So my frustration is, is that not only do we not know what went on, we don't know how it happened. We don't know why it happened. And I think that's just as important to understand the motivations and the machinations of what went on and how we got to the point that we were willing to sacrifice half a million people. It's, it's, it's challenging. And I don't think we do our posterity any justice by not educating them on exactly what happened, how it happened. Presumably so it won't happen again though there are no guarantees. 2001 is a good uh, example of that. But here we go, 20 years later, and we have to deal with the consequences of our own bad behavior. <clears throat> Number two, Bob Dole. Now, I'm kind of sketchy on all my memory about Bob. I know he was a long time senator out of Kansas, and I know he was a World War II veteran. And probably one of the last surviving uh, elected officials that was also a World War II veteran that was just recently died. He was a pretty darn good politician. He was a good Republican. <sighs> Not sure that I'd be super enthusiastic to have him be the leader of the free world, which is probably why he lost his election. But he was a solid guy, and very, very few people had a record like him. So uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, issue number three there are rules, and there are rules. Now, I'm going to take this both at the global level and then bring it down to the local level. So apparently, in the Belt and Road Initiative of China's really is upsetting a lot of people. They don't like the 
modern colonization, colonization attempts by the Chinese government. Now, would it be wrong to say that this is basically the pot calling the kettle black? Do not Western nations routinely engage in this kind of thing? Have we not been doing that really for the better part of 400 years? Now, don't get me wrong. Every nation at their peak of power did the same exact thing. Europe was nothing new in this. All right, power brokers from the Middle East, power brokers from China, power brokers from India, power brokers from Africa, Europe, and then ultimately the United States have all done the same kind of thing. So this is nothing new under the sun to quote Solomon once again. But I just think the real issue is they don't like the challenge to their power. They don't like that there's someone invading their space. They want to create a different set of rules. The irony is they all took advantage of of China being able to do the things that we weren't able to do for a long, long time. And now that, well, some of that power has shifted, they don't like it. It's upsetting to them. And they're going to bang the drums of war and sacrifice us to put those people back in a box. And by that, I mean the Chinese government. I'm not sure that that's the way the world's going to work. I'm not sure they're going to really get the outcome that they think they're going to get. But that doesn't mean they won't try it. It doesn't mean that they won't attempt it. It doesn't mean that we won't end up paying the price for it. All I have to say is be aware. Watch. See what's going on. And see if we uh, get to pay the price for them once again. Locally, there are rules and then there are rules. So, I don't know if you're aware of this, but down in Round Rock, which is near Austin, there's been a little kerfuffle at the local school board. It seems that the school board wanted to hire, and and again, I'm not going to get all the details right, because number one, I don't remember, number two, I'm not going to look it up, and number three, it's really not that important. The the exact details are not important to the larger principle in play here. And I suggest that you follow the rules set out by Neil Bortz. Basically, you don't trust anything I say. You look up everything. And whether it was online or on TV, you still don't trust it. You go look it up. And you look for more than one source. Now, I'm not going to purposely go to mislead anybody at any one time, but I can't say that I wouldn't fall victim from time to time of somebody misleading me or that I jumble a detail So never, ever take my word for it. Always look me up and everybody else for that matter. But I'm going to be honest and tell you that up front. So, so the crux of the story is, is there were some shenanigans that needed to be investigated on a potential candidate to become the new superintendent of the school district. And there were even two members of the school board that wanted to investigate it, but the others jammed through. The guy's hiring. And then once this individual was hired, he stationed the police there to arrest the people that were protesting what had happened and the policies and problems that this guy was going to bring with him. They're arresting people at a public meeting and they're preventing people from partaking in things that are protected by, first of all, the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, not to mention our very own Texas State Constitution. We have the right to petition. We have the right to gather. We have the right to seek redress. And when a school board believes itself tyrannical enough to do that, and then there's another one out there, at this point, it might even be the same ones that actually send their own police to go arrest people. I'm sorry. But if the school police show up in my house to try and arrest me, I'm calling the sheriff. I'm not going with him anywhere. Certainly not going to agree to be arrested by somebody that has zero authority outside of their school. Eh, wrong answer. That'd be false imprisonment. At the very least, that's a nice hefty lawsuit. But I will not comply. That is inappropriate and an abuse of power. 
Now, while we're speaking of abuse of power, that very same thing is going on right here in Collin County. There are at least two school boards that are abusing their power. You need to do your own research and find out which ones they are. Get involved and do something about it. The people there need to be held accountable. We need to know exactly what happened, how it happened, and why it happened. And we need to stop it. We need to prevent it from happening again. And the fact that nobody seems to care is very disappointing. Not surprising, but disappointing nonetheless. If you don't show up, they will continue to get away with it. If you don't articulate what the problems are and hold them to the very same rules that are supposed to govern them, they're going to continue to get away with it. And we're going to get stuck holding the bag. When you have corrupt politicians in charge, they need to be dealt with. Now, hopefully it'll be something short of the lamppost that befell El Duce. But they just need to retire. They need to resign and go home. They need to maybe go spend some more time with family. Perhaps take an interest in those grandchildren. I don't know, but they just need to go away. If they're not going to do the job that we sent them there to do, if they're going to continually undermine their own constituents, they have no business continuing to represent us. And that's just the school boards. We don't even have to talk about what goes on at the state or the federal level. It's just the school boards. We have to show up. Now, in my perfect world, we wouldn't have government schools. But the world's not perfect, and it ain't my world. So we do have government schools. And if we're going to have government schools, we need to remind them that they work for us. And because they work from us, or for us, excuse me, they have certain things they must do. And the rules apply to them equally well as they do to everybody else. They must uphold their own rules. That's our job. As parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles of kids in the school district, we need to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do and that, quite frankly, they're wise with our money. They have no problem taking our money, but if they're going to take it, they need to be wise with how they spend it. Number four, anger versus angst. You know, this is the animating thing of a good number of people. Indeed, I think most of the millennial generation can relate to this. I know my own Gen X, well, that's going to actually be number five, but my own Gen X has their own uh, thought process as a meme, if you will. So you can let this stuff get you down. You can let this stuff worry you. Or worse yet, you can let it bother you and anger you to where you can't even think straight. Both of those are not healthy. It's not good to be angry all the time. It's not good to hold all government at all times in contempt. And by all government, I mean, just mean anything in your life that seeks to run you essentially is looking to take the place of government. Because we as humans, we strive to have something to issue rules. We want order. We desire rules. That's just the way we're made. Some of us don't really need those rules because we know what the right thing is and we generally do it. But there are a whole lot of other people. They need to have those lines. They need, they need the order. And I don't fault them for that because I'm very well aware that we are fallen people. By creation standards, we can never, ever be good. But some people require a firmer hand. And if we just have basic sets of rules... In, in basic directives, if you will, to, w- to which to run our lives off of, it'll be a much better place. And there's no need to be angry. We don't have to worry about the Karens that seek to run our lives. And you know what? I Again, Karen's not the appropriate term. Let's go with Yankees. Thank you, Brian McClanahan, for that. Let, Yankees don't need to run your life. Now, they think they need to run everybody's life. They need. They think they know better than everybody. They need to be in control, but we don't need Yankees running our lives. So, to go through your whole life being angry at Yankees being Yankees is not helpful. Indeed, the other side of that coin is the angst, right? The concern, the worry, the... It, it beats me down. I, I'm, I'm frazzled all the time. Again, not productive, not healthful. Not going to get anything done. 
There's the happy warrior mindset that a number of people have exhibited. I think PJ O'Rourke was a a fan of that. I know Dr. Ron Paul was. I think to some extent, I'd be fair to say Tom, Dr. Tom Woods is as well. And and let me preface that. The great Ron Paul, Dr. Ron Paul. Uh, That being said, not everybody's cut out to do that. Not everybody can put on that happy face all the time. But you've got to be able to let certain things roll off your back. You've got to be able to just kind of check out or ignore certain things. You have to disconnect. You've got to take a little downtime. I mean, even myself, I, as much as I love politics and I love just being involved in things and I, and I want to serve, I, you've got to take some time off. I mean, heck, I took better part of a year off from 08 to 09. Just, it, it just needed a break. And if we don't take those breaks, if we don't recover our mind, our sense, we're going to become less useful going forward. And I don't recommend that for anybody. Okay, so number five, let it all burn. Yes, that's that's the Gen X uh, mantra, if you will, or the meme associated most with Gen X. We got to see all the great things of the 80s and I guess even the 90s. And we're now dealing with the crap that we're being given in 2020 going forward. We're living in our very own dystopia. And there's a good number of us that are just want to say, forget it. There's no surprise in my mind why people are chanting, let's go. There's no surprise in my mind why people just say forget about it all the time, everywhere. They just don't care. There's an entire generation of people that thought they would be given an opportunity to do certain things. They thought they followed the rules and did what they were told. They would be successful and be able to make that difference that they were told they need to make. Unfortunately, the generation before us didn't really uphold the bargain. They liked that control just a little too much. They like having their finger over the button just a little too much. They liked having their midlife crisis at the expense of everybody around them. Again, no reason to be angry about it. The angst that we're going to suffer, <laughs> it, it's again, not helpful. But you want to really avoid the temptation of living under the idea of just let it all burn. I mean, we know it's going to fail. We can see it's going to fail. I mean, since I was 17 years old, I understood Social Security was never, ever going to come to me. That it was a joke. It was a lie. I think the phrase is, a lie that the old tell the young. Or maybe that was just freedom. I don't know. Whatever. The idea that you can pay into a system and get that money back at the end, it's called a Ponzi scheme. They threw a guy in jail over that. They routinely throw people in jail for doing the very same thing that our government does on our behalf. It's not going to happen. And I mean, with the way they're inflating money, (laughs) I mean, come on. Do you think that it's a surprise after the amount of money they put in the system that our grocery bills have gone up by 60%? Really? Do you really think it costs $10,000 more to build that truck than it did a year and a half ago? No, of course not. Oh, I know all the chips are not available, right? Yeah. The supply chain's all jacked up. Yeah, but who caused that? I gave a book at a Christmas party as a kind of a gag gift. It was Atlas Shrugged. And I put a piece of paper over the top that said now in nonfiction in the country near you why is it that I keep thinking to myself that I'm living in the dystopia that was predicted 60 80 50 years ago whatever multiple times multiple ways and different versions and variations and yet we're getting to see amalgamation of all of them playing out and nobody's doing anything about it Indeed, we allegedly elected a sock puppet of a man that it doesn't even know what day it is sometimes. Can't seem to keep track of where he's at, where he's going. And quite frankly, that's just not inspire any faith. 
the same guy's got a face down <laughs> 11 or Z or whatever his official name is. Like, and I don't mean any disrespect. I just know it's XI. I think it's pronounced I. Well, whatever. The Chinese premier. And then, of course, there's Putin. <laughs> and we got <laughs> our sock puppet going over there. <laughs> and don't even get me started on his number two who, well, in my opinion, is basically a number two. So, look, we're in trouble. There are plenty of other podcasts out there that can give you the solutions on how you should have an exit plan, what you can do. I'm going to not name them by name. I'm going to tell you you need to go look into it. You need to seriously consider, if you're my age or younger, What are you going to do when the wheels come off? What's the best way to deal with it? I'm not going to suggest that there's the best answer for everybody everywhere. I don't believe that. I don't believe that we're all a monolith. I don't believe that everybody that looks like me or talks like me or whatever thinks like me. And I certainly don't believe that of anybody else that doesn't look like me or doesn't sound like me. There's a reason why we have stereotypes because they're largely true. And the odds are that most people are going to be properly identified by a stereotype. But that doesn't mean everybody all the time. I know we're all precious snowflakes, right? Hello, millennial. But we have to seriously consider what are we going to do? And it's like a controlled demolition of our entire economy and country. And those people that are running it just seem to be okay with it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I put the tinfoil hat on. Just set that aside for a minute. Tinfoil or not tinfoil. Theory or not theory. Just spend five minutes watching the local news. And you're going to get the idea that something's off. They're selling panic across the board. They're selling the angst. They're trying to build the anger. Both of which are unhealthy. We've already established that. They mess with your body. Go listen to a medical podcast. They'll give you tons of reasons why that's bad for you. At the end of the day, we can only do what we can do and trust that, quite frankly, Jesus is still king and Christ is still on his throne, right? Same guy, same thing. But that doesn't mean I don't have to defend my family, defend my faith, and defend my country. It doesn't mean I don't have to show up. It doesn't mean that there isn't work for me to do. It just means that we're all still under the watch fly. We're still in the palm of his hand no matter what we do to ourselves. As long as we remember Last thing, that'll fix you. See, what happens is is when you think you can do it on your own, when you think you don't need help, when you think that you're the means to the end, you set yourself up for failure. You get way ahead of the crowd and you get chopped off. There's something to be said for timing. There's something to be said for a well-laid plan. But the reality is, is we don't know what happens tomorrow. Now, I know of people that have worked their entire life. They had a plan for everything. They saved diligently. They did, followed all the rules. And it's as if the other person on the other side, like a young, petulant child, took that game of life or game of monopoly and slapped the bottom of it and threw the whole game in disarray. And the person that had followed the rules and did everything right watched everything get wiped away. They weren't prepared for it. They don't know what to do. Those are the people that I have angst for. Those are the people I have anger for. I've tried to avoid being one of those people my entire life. 
I don't know how entirely successful I've been at it. You can't time the market. You can't time a movement. And you can't plan everything. But you got to have a general idea where you want to go from point A to point B. And that's generally how I live my life. Sometimes I get out of step and I get smacked back into place. Sometimes I misstep more than once and I have to reconfigure and get back on track. I imagine it's like that for everybody. I don't think there is a one size fit all solution. I know there's not a one size fits all answer for anything. But at some point, going back to points four and five, when things get tough, you got to have an answer. When things get tough, you got to know what you want to do. When things get tough, you got to be able to think on your feet. Because remember, there are rules and then there are rules. And they're not designed for us. Much like we watched out on a TV set a little over 20 years ago when our world changed, which was not dissimilar to what happened 60 years prior to that. That's just where we're at right now. As they say, stay frosty. This is According to Callus, and I will see you on the other side.